Eventually. Yeah. Look how large we are. Wow. And look how big the wall is. Yeah. This is this is the first time we're doing anything in here. Well, like, it's it's a just tell them it's a secret room. It is a secret room. Yeah. No one's ever seen it. That sounds weird, man. Yeah. yeah. No homo. No. no homo. No. Yeah. Um, yes, Rocco, the doctor is in the house. We're still waiting for Kiwi. Kiwi's probably stopped for a bourbon or two. He'll be here. Um, unless, he, unless he tried to take Marge again and you know, made it halfway. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah. But he, he got stuck with Marge this time, right? Yeah, from the fuel line. I think he fixed that and might be. What do you think of the hydrus? Do you want me to bring that up a little bit more? Yeah, bring it. Yeah, I can Let's try, try it. Let's try. I gotta be careful not to knock this water. Yeah. All right, let me know when it looks good. Uh, Pooh Bar is here. Max is here. How's that? Um, a little more. Yeah, that's good. Good? Okay. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Very nice. Okay. Um, look at me. What do you got? 16 likes. They, I mean, they just got here. They already it's just. Is, doesn't that feel good? That is. That's yeah. Very warm and fuzzy. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Didn't I have a coffee on it? I think it's in, in the car or oh, in shit. the bench. All right, we'll keep them. Okay, keep everybody entertained. Let's see what's going on. Let's see who we got here. John Baker, Bobby Z, Nike Ed, Rocco, Fubar, Territory, Tony Perna, Dr. Good and Sexy, Rocco, Tony loved the No Star video talk about him. Feeding the trolls. <laughs> so, is doctor doing a surgery on Richard? Will Richard have a hand pump for, for to get it up for his ethereal? No, we, we're just going to um, do a little transplant and give him a little bit more of a heartbeat and maybe some Viagra. I don't think a pump is needed. Operating room today, yes. Um, hey guys. Chungo's here. Big Richard, aka the Flood Monk. Yep. Hey, Tony and friends, Max A. Specs. James Morton, Rocco, Grumpy Stillskin, Doctors in the House. Hey, how you doing? Fubar, thanks for posting the link to the channel. Uh, Kiwi's on his way. Tony's in the other room trying to find his coffee. Gerald, yeah, the 318 needs a drink of water. Uh, yeah, after the mud bath that it had. Probably could use a clean drink of water. Jason Fritcher and Coffee is sitting on a bumper somewhere. No, I think he had it when he pulled up. Did you find it? Yeah, it was right on the workbench. I went all over. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and can we just pull up? Oh, okay. So. I hope. Does he know where he's back here? He doesn't know where he's back here. Oh, yeah. He's, he's like, like he's hey, what you guys at? Yeah. Look, here we were sent you a spot. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. In the new room. Come the on room. in. Hey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, we like the three stooges. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the pod. This will be the podcast studio. Really? It's the first time we're using it. I just literally this table, I just picked this up 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Me and she put it just together. Just screwed it together, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spontaneous. Mm -hmm. All right, I can't even begin to read the questions from where I am. <laughs> we're gonna get a monitor too. We'll have a monitor up here. A big uh, monitor, monitor so we don't have to all lean in and squint the Yeah, ones. next yeah. Wednesday we'll have a nice monitor. Kind of just likes to get a like, no, I don't that's why I got a round it. table, bro. We got a round table to it. <laughs> <laughs> we can minimize the homo stuff. Yeah. All right. Homophobic. He has one in each ear. I'm, 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 I'm a homo paranoid. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. that one in. Um. Now, Kevin, Tony, did you sell the red dart with the blue hood? Red dart with the blue hood. Yes, I sold that uh, last year. Ah. That was that was one of the when I decided to make the move and downsize. That was one of the first things to go. Hey, Jeff. How you doing, man? Jeff Hutchins. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to hear from you. A moment of silence. Uh, yeah. Dead air. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Up. I'm wanting, yeah. wanting, wanting to put, put an LS in an 86 F-150. Well, you should put it in a Ranger. It'll be faster. But uh, can you do a new video with 
pointers for us. <coughs> that, that I didn't know why the shoe went up. I don't know what that is. thought of putting a shoe yeah. in a Ford. Oh, it's it's yeah, okay. Mine came that way. I couldn't help it. No, but, um, you know, drop it off at the house and bring some money and we'll, you know, we'll get it pointed in the right direction for it. Yeah. yeah. Michigan speed Kiwi, good of you to come. Oh, we do. Oh, we'll be out here on a Wednesday night. I just, it, uh, I didn't quite judge my uh, driving time correctly tonight, but that's it was a lot better than last week. So. You made it. You're only what? You're, you're three. only three. You were three minutes late. Three minutes that's, late. That's on time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tony, how's project improbable? Uh, gathering parts for, I've been cleaning it. Cleaning it? I so it looked like you had a new windshield. I put a, I put a windshield in it. Well, I had a windshield put in it. Put it. <coughs> and, mm, uh, it's looking I'm, nice. I'm not, yeah. I'm not like you, you know, you just throw a windshield and I, I pay people to do it. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's see. Tomorrow I order a bunch of parts for it and I'm waiting for Dr. Art with the computer. What's going on with my computer? We'll find a new one. <laughs> we'll have to find a new one. We have to find a new one. Okay, but we need to find one fast because it's like, I'm going to get sent to the track. All right. Yeah, we'll get. All right. We can do that. Okay. Anthony Perna, Kiwi House March Yard. She's going good. I took her to a little local car show last Saturday. And uh, yeah, people were loving all that pretty good. Um, yeah, just getting lots of little things sorted out. Got the original tank back in and fixed now, and the fuel, proper fuel system, and a mechanical pump back in it, and uh, just stuff like that. Next thing on the list is to build an exhaust for it. Because I'm getting tired of the racket. I don't like that exhaust. We got we got glass pack on one side so and an oval on the other one side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what we could get at the time. So, so have, you, have you seen what Dr. Ross been doing to your truck? I have seen that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? It looks good. Yeah. Like it's, it. a, it's a better truck than I thought it was. Right. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's actually it's, it's actually pretty nice. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Really should have should have bought it when you offered it to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the motor is not, you know, I had no opinion on the motor, and, you know, that was, it we, was, it was, I, I was never shocked. meant to be any more than a core, so, which is what it really turned out right, to be. Right, right. But right. we did roll, well, let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I had no idea. We cracked it open. I saw it today. I was like, well, did you see the video? Yeah. 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 It's just, yeah, mud. Someone called it here silt earlier with silt. Silt, the keyword. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Who is Mo? Chris Cadman, who was Mo, mm -hmm. Mo Curley and what's the other one? Uh, Shem, oh, it was uh, the Three Stooges. Yeah, right? yeah, Mo, Larry. Oh, Mo, Larry, Curly. And Curly, yeah. Or Shem. Yeah, Shem sucks. Or uh, who was the other guy? There was, uh, Mo and Larry were always there. Mm -hmm. And then the third guy we kept, so it was, it was Shem. So we must be Mo and Larry and then this is. Curly Joe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah not really. Yeah, I'm, I'm the yeah, I'm the curling. Yeah. Or Minnie Mo and Jack, Mexican spec. Minnie Mo. Yeah, yeah the pet, pet boys. boys. <laughs> we actually have the pet boys in town now. I know. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm like, I haven't seen since living in California. I haven't seen one of them. How much to do the swap, Doctor? Uh, I have a run in 2002 Yukon donor, and I live three hours south of you. I'm not sure what he wants swapped in. I didn't catch that. But that's that's the guy with the Ellison 150. Do you really want to take ah. more from YouTube the YouTube audience? Which one? Go go to my channel and find my email, and then send me an email. We'll talk about it. I would I would scream really really carefully. I'm just no, no, I'm, I'm just going to talk about it. That's all. Well, so as far as it saying, as far I'm as it can go, yeah. James Martin, Kiwi, shout out from Weymouth, Mass. Loving the adventure of Curly, mm. Curly Joe and Joe Bezos. Mm. There you go. Yeah. There you are. Joe stooge. Besser was the other stooge, okay? Yeah. Has Dr. given you a, a, a bill yet? No, not yet. Not yet, no. No. We've <laughs> talked about a cursory and yeah, there's 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 been no blood yet, so it's you know, it's okay. Yeah. And it's, and it's and it's getting done on the cheap, so yeah, yeah. There's you know the budget's pretty low at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. good pocket change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I kicked out a couple of parts. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some wheels, some shocks. Oh, okay. Cool. Footy gas. Oh, did you? Did which which wheels did you end up? Did you? Yeah, slots. Did they gave you a pair of slots. Ah, oh, cool. yeah. Cool, cool. Fifteen by eight or ten slots. I got them all cleaned up, yeah. and I had to, I bought the left-handed lug nuts with the shank and the washer and the. Oh, okay. Because. 
Yeah, yeah the truck's got three left-handed, well, I told you, three left-handed yeah. thread, and yeah, so we got a, a left hand and a right hand thread in the back and two lefts on the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had the right hand shape, and so I had to buy by the left, so we can put the slots in the back and stuff like uh, that. I don't, that's, that's later. Chuck okay. A, <laughs> Big Richard truck, aka the sludge factory. <laughs> it was brutal. Mm -hmm. I, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why we couldn't get it to light. Just because the gas was getting all soaked up out of mud? I, I mean, while we were doing it, I yeah, had no uh, idea. I, I, was, I was really starting to get frustrated. Imagine all that mud blowing out the exhaust. Oh, fire would have fired it. it was <laughs> crazy. Well, we never did find out where the piss smell was coming from. Oh, I'd say that's what was what was fermenting in the belly. In the belly. No, it was, it was definite piss. I bet you there was probably a, a nest in one of the exhaust mud poles. I looked at it. Not anymore, there's not. There might have been, but... Did you look on the floor under the truck? We might have blown it out. I didn't know. I didn't crawl underneath there. I'd crawl underneath there to undo the torque converter bolts. That's where you got right there. Right. Yeah. But does it look like the full throttle come out? Well, it's least a little way. Yeah, it, it should. Have. There's there's like a little head on it. should be able to get it out. When we pull the trans off, I'll, I'll keep the converter. It'll freshen the trans and I'll get that. I got all stuff like that. Or unless you want to, you know, get a cool new old converter for the like 5,000 stool converter or anything? No. 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 You don't want that. You want to <laughs> yeah. drive the thing. Mm hmm. Oh, I have a couple of stock converters that we do. Anthony Further, Kiwi, no one is ever relieved when they get a doctor's bill, just saying. I think it's cheaper for me to do the work the Kiwi than Kiwi do the work for me. I think he's a little more expensive. Your hourly rate's probably probably a little bit high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's good this way. Yeah. And I just don't work. I mean, it was just <laughs> I, it, it would have been <laughs> sat down the back corner today, but still. <laughs> To me to do yeah. anything with it, so I just mm -hmm. I haven't got time to get to much at all. I'll be doing well to get an exhaust system built on Mark mm -hmm. by the time we hit um, power to it. Uh, Rocco was saying, I hope the trains are okay. Hard to find valve body for a cable shift. It's not a cable shift trains, it's a later trains. It's a, it's a small block 727, so we, we won't have any problems. I have enough stuff to rebuild that transmission like 20 times over. And you're saying it's out of a van, it's got a timing hole in it, yeah, yeah. But the motor isn't out of a, although well, the, the motor might be out of a van, but it, it has a car oil pan on it. It's like a mixed match of stuff. Yeah, it's very strange. So, uh, let's see. Oh, who will put the link to my merch? Me yeah, go. this this stuff. You can be styling like the big guys. You, you don't have my, no. You don't have any merch at all. <laughs> Doctor Art has cool merch. Is, I, that, is I, that the shirt you're wearing today? Yeah, that's the same shirt I was wearing today. Show, show them who's back of the shirt. <laughs> that's a good shirt, man. Yeah, let me get fashion show. Here. There you go. This is not how to do it. This is how I do it. But I agree. I, you see, I'm jealous, yeah. man. That's that's a good one. Uh, let's see. Sounds like an echo chimney. Yes, man. This is literally the very first time we've used this room this is going to be the podcast area okay um i still have to sound deaden things i gotta cover the window i'm gonna put stuff back here and this table and literally 15 minutes before i bought this table like 15 minutes before we went on air dr Art and I just put it together it's a cool they can see the nice metal it's a cool table, right? yeah 50 bucks a marketplace we just need some beers on the or bourbon or <laughs> alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. Alcoholics go to a meeting. I'm a, I'm a drunk. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, Robbie Autry, Kiwi, you're going to polish out the patina on large match. I'm going to um, probably I'm going to get rid of all that white rattle can shit that's over a lot of it, and and I think that'll just make it look a lot better. I think the paint's a bit beyond like shining up, and and obviously rust you can't. Polish rust and yeah, if shine. You clear it. Won't that won't the shine come up? Ah, uh, if you clear it, you, uh, yeah, that'll that'll give it a little bit of shine. Just clear the thing. It'll look beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I've got to get rid of that white off it first. Mm -hmm. The the white all down the bottom half of it. It's just like. But that is part of its history. Uh, yeah. That that's kind of the idea behind the patina thing is to seal the car's history. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> I think so. Now the white's got to go for me. It's okay. Gonna, yeah. Yeah, the white was taste specific and. You're not into it. Nah. Yeah. Did you find the side trim for it yet? No. Okay. No. So the hunter's still on for that. The hunter's still on for the side trim. 
Um, down at CTC Auto Ranch in Texas, they've got one the same mm. um, with the same trim on it, and there's probably 70% of it there. Yeah. And with what I've got, it would make it to about 80%, but there's still be some missing. So, well, um, so it's close. Yeah, I might just pull the trigger on on that stuff they've got down there and see what else I can find. Um, but apparently they're they're notorious for being pretty highly priced. So. I need to make that call and see how much you going to be. worried about money. Oh, jeez, here we go. <laughs> yeah. what, what was the old saying? If I had Kiwi's money, I burn mine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to commit suicide, I'd jump off his walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. Rocco, how far are you planning to drive for the power tour? What, were we, what was your plan to go up to? Oh, I'm running out of gas. Do you run out of gas? I'm out of functional gauge. Uh, I think we're just gonna go to Bowling Green. Right. Yeah, Bowling Green for the kickoff, and then yeah. down here, then the, the speedway is literally well, not from Kiwi, but for us, it's 15 minutes away from here. Not even. It's, a, well, it's two exits up the up the interstate here. Yeah. So yeah, the the Nashville stop is like like literally like 10 minutes from my from where we're sitting right now. So. So what day of the week does it come through? Does it go to Bowling Green? Bowling Green's a Monday. Okay. The 10th, and then the speedway is the 11th. Right. So first thing, first thing that Monday morning, we'll if everybody's going to go with us. Right. Right. We'll all meet. Yeah. Actually, this is probably the best place to meet because we could just jump right on the interstate here and run mm-hmm. like 24 to 65 off of Bowling Green. Right. And then come back and hit Nashville. Yeah, you can take 231 up too if you want to take the scenic way. It oh, goes, yeah. goes almost all the way up there. And That's right. Yeah. It's, yeah, pretty, it's, it's a it. pretty decent drive actually. So. Avoid all the traffic trying to go through Nashville on Monday morning. Yeah, we'll have at least four yeah. or five pretty cool cars in mm-hmm. in tow in caravan. Mexican speak. Kiwi will burn real money when he buys the pacer that's down there. <laughs> yeah, he, he's um, Mexican speak. Sent me some pictures of quite a quite a nice pacer, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 above my um, legal limit of cars at the moment, so. But you have a limit? Uh, well, it's not self-imposed. <laughs> Mrs. Kelly <laughs> draws the line. Right? It's kind of imposed. There's a line, <laughs> there's a line being drawn, and it's like. Mm-hmm. But but the cars that your friends built does that count? No. So so, just, so we keep building cars for them, right? So them out front. You keep picking them up. I want to do something with that. What's that little farm thing you got there? The, the, the oh, a little Oh, I want to do something with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Know. Put a put a small lot put. Take the 318 out of um, Big no, Richard. You know what needs, no, you know what needs to go in that. What? Small block Ford? No. What? A nail head. <laughs> a nail head. A 425. Well, <laughs> you just have to know where someone's going to where, where there's a little 1969 Datsun and a 425 with nail head sitting. That would be different, wouldn't it? Blow, that would blow up the internet. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would be different. That would be an ultimate burnout car. <laughs> oh, oh, the things the things we have in store for yeah, you guys. Let's, uh, let's see. <laughs> if Kiwi buys the pacer but stores it at Tony's shop, is that all out? I'm out of, I'm out of room here. I'm already out of room. <laughs> and the trouble is, Mrs. Kiwi sneaks onto this. She watches. Yeah, she watches. Mrs. Kiwi is everywhere. I I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> have this window open. You know, yeah, she's, I'm she's expecting looking. her to peer in from the side. And little face like peek. Here yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Tony just warped my mind. Oh, how do I do that? All right. Well, we're not having tech talk. This is supposed to be tech talk. Right. But can I say something tech? Um, are you um, okay? Um, big Big Richards. Is it Big Richard? Big yeah, Richard. Big yeah. Richard. Yeah. Um, are you like miking up the bores and measuring everything and <laughs> gapping rings to the nearest well, half we'll, of the we'll, we'll, we'll gap rings. Yeah. The rings will have gap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do we look like Steve Marks? Come on. <laughs> now it, it'll, yeah. um, and then the new motor, I'm going to say it now, it will just fire right up. Yep. Like, like it'll light right off. Mm. And it'll, yeah, it's, it's going to sound Before fantastic. Before the ring completes a revolution, it'll be. <laughs> Park right off. Yep. And we got some real good plans for it for some internals and some parts and some nice exhaust. It's, it's 
And we, we talked we, we, we talk for a few minutes about an oddball experiment with one of the solars. So I don't want to talk about that now. What I'll do is I'll do it on another head that I've got, okay. and we'll just in case. Okay. Jason Fitch, Kiwi, when you are reassembling Mustang body panels, what do you use between the panels like Dum Dum? Um, hmm, I'm not quite sure what you, I'm not really following the question, to be honest. Um, what was the question? Kiwi, when you're reassembling Mustang body panels, what do you use between the panels like Dum Dum? I mean, I use Dum Dum um, for a few various different things. Um, you could use Dr. Pepper. <laughs> just like it's but I'm not quite it's sure what you mean in between like the and panels. It's like, panels right. you mean, are you meaning like when you put a front fender on and to seal the inner fender to the outer fender? Is that kind of what you're meaning? Because Dum Dum's good for that. Um, which is just, Dum Dum's just beautiful. Every time you say that, I think you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah. I may have a persecution <laughs> complex. <laughs> Jason, the fenders usually have a beautiful strip between them. Yeah, um, that's always a good idea to put that there. Um, you know, it can get a bit messy and sticky and nasty, but um, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Like if you're going to be driving them in the in the weather much, uh, if you're not going to ever drive it in the wet, then not really necessary. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, ben asked, did you, did you ever build one of those 400 block stroke motors? Oh, yeah, I built several of them and I have one apart at the house that I've been putting off and putting off and putting off. But I have everything, I have the pistons, I got the rods, I got the crank, I everything all ready to go. I just haven't done anything with it yet. That's going in my 68 Roadrunner. But again, to have another car, it's just been sitting there for five years, six years, we're doing this channel, the car hasn't moved. So, Robbie Autry is asking panel bond. Uh, that's not something I, I really, really ever use as panel bond. Um, I'm probably a little bit too old school for it. And the older cars really aren't designed to use panel bond on. Um, when they when they design and stamp the sheet metal on the model cars, modern cars, uh, you know, it's designed with, um, with the panel bond in mind. You need nice, flat, very well fitting surfaces. Uh, you know, with panel bond, if you've got you know eight of an inch gaps and stuff and like that. And sufficient overlap. Yeah, sufficient overlap. Yeah. You know, but, but they design them with that right, overlap, overlap with yeah. big enough overlap. And the quality of tooling these days, you know, those overlaps touch. They're not just kind of in the same zip code like a lot of. Like, mm -hmm. But you put busing panels together, and if, if they touch, that's like woohoo! Yeah, something's, <laughs> something's wrong here. They touch. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris Kaplan, I use bourbon. Yeah, well, you know, you're good. Yeah, you use enough of it, you, you don't care. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, right. I want to know what brand bourbon? Yeah. What brand bourbon? Uh, Maker's Mark is my go-to um, for most of the time. Otherwise, Angels Envy. Well, good, Doctor. Make sure you wear open-toed sandals and write your to-do list down. On the truck when we're working on Big Rich. Yeah, no, and top of the list. I think that's where he's going with that reference. What's he saying now? Like a fiber. <laughs> oh, yeah, douchebag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't like him. On the truck. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, no. Sorry. Don't do that. Um, let's see. Uh oh, I think it froze. Did it freeze? Rocco, oh, there there we go. Go. Rocco, thumbs up for Maker's Mark. It's just a nice bourbon and it's not ridiculously expensive. And <laughs> no wild turkey, but no, wild turkey's not what wouldn't be one of my favorites. No. What about uh, Buffalo Trace? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Buffalo Trace and Sims are very nice. Mm, yeah. 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 I, don't know I know you don't mix. But, you know. No, I do. I do. <laughs> I, I mix, uh, you know, it's just, yeah. yeah. I don't I don't drink anymore, really. Yeah. But I used to love Tango. You remember yeah. that? No. Really? No. It, it's vodka and tang. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it just goes straight to the brain. Like there's no, it's like an express shot right to the brain. Need medals in a two dollar super chair. Please get the Jeep running. That, oh, that, yeah, that's yeah, right yeah, right yeah. yeah. Put that that's, that's weird. I point that way and on the screen I'm pointing the other way. It's like that's really quite, we just kind of the brain. Mm -hmm. it's like looking at a mirror. 
Um, I think, so we're going to have to, I'm not going to move it now, but I think for the next one, we have to move the camera back a little bit and then we can spread out a little more. Yeah. So that's why I got the round table. So that we, we go. You want me to be further away or? or, or no, 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 close enough. You're plenty close to you. Now. <laughs> Okay, here's a tech question. Any of you guys run across a small block 400 with a 327 crank, 352 cubic inch, recommended by Smokey Yellow? I always wanted to build one. I have never come across that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one, no. Mm -hmm. no, I don't think I've ever even heard of it. Really, but... Yeah, with the 400, you have to have like, a, don't they have like spacers for the mains because the 327 crank is smaller? So, yeah. There's something like that that I. But you see, the, the thing is, with, with Smokey Unix stuff, a lot of that is, is speedway specific. Right, like for instance, if you built a, an engine specifically to make power in that six and seven thousand RPM range, where those things are always at, the odds are it's going to be a slug in normal driving. Mm. It's not going to be a good hot rod engine. You see what I'm saying? So it's screaming. What would read? What would the three twenty seven strike and four hundred? Yeah, but it's yeah. always going to be screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be, be, be bogged until five thousand RPM. Right. Yeah. So that's the thing. You know, a lot of those, a lot of that type of combination, a lot of smoky unix sort of stuff, is speedway oriented. It's different than what we generally do. Mm. Uh, just got a two twenty five slant. Any vital tricks to improve the factory horsepower? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a fairly long list. Isn't it? That's a really long list. Yeah. <laughs> Get another one and put it in the trunk. And... Yeah, <laughs> those engines are hard. They're really hard. Well, um, I mean, one good trick is to throw it away and get. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I yeah. haven't given up on the slant six yet. But but the slant six did beat me up. I I, I to be honest with you, it, it definitely beat me up. That's why I've got to regroup with it and go back to it. But uh, what was the question we asked now? See any vital modifications to to help the horsepower or key modifications? Depends how how stock you want to leave or how modified you want to go. It, like if it's it, a driver type of engine. Uh, a Super 6 2 barrel intake manifold with a Carter DVD that's the, the, the most trouble free, it's factory setup. Super 6. Um, cam, it's hard to say. Uh, so I'm not going to say anything about the cam. Um, it's like headers are good, a good headers, cheap good. horsepower. Headers are good, right? Mm. But the thing is, the slant has a really beautiful exhaust manifold. The slant has long individual runners right it's close to a header it's almost right. like a shorty header right uh but the head pipe is is usually undersized so going with a, a large diameter or two and a quarter inch inside diameter head pipe or manifold right will make a big difference ah. so it's not and curve the distributor curve the distributor they don't like they don't like a lot of a lot of total timing the slide six has a very small bore so it, it maximum you 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 look at 30 32 degrees on a slant six is like 36 degrees on a 440. So so you want to keep the maximum timing between like 30 and 32. Uh, some people say 28. I, I don't think that's too far off. And, uh, and you want as much initial timing as you can get. So I would I would close up the curve. So you've only got about 10 degrees this week. It's easy to start. I, I think I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it sounds like it sounds good. Solid right? plan. Yeah, it sounds convincing. Like, yeah, yeah. Carburetor and exhaust. Yeah, and recurve <laughs> distributor, just yeah. like every other car. Around. Yeah. So Jeff Hutchins. So an S car engine is no good for my truck. You are correct, sir. It is no good for your truck. Unless he's got a mud truck. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Depends on use. Yeah, it depends on your use. Exactly. Exactly. But just for a drive around and burn tires? No. No. Shannon, I have a 406 small block Chevy has stripped out the threads on the crank. I was able to install a new balancer, but can't get torque on the bolt. Hmm. So if it can't torque the bolt, what should I do? So presumably you can't torque the bolt because it's spinning. But you stole the thread good, out of it. That's a pretty good trick for that, yeah. Um, okay, I'm not going to say, right, to do this. But I'm just going to throw this out there. There are some engines that don't use a bolt on the damper. And the slant six is one of them. The slant six, you think you look at the slant six, there's no bolt holding the damper on. The damper is just pressed in place. The crank is, thre is threaded to take a bolt, but from the factory, they didn't put a bolt on there. They just slid the damper on and they stay. 
Really? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that's the thing to do. But it would have to be a tight fit. Obviously, you need yeah. a bit of pressing. Yeah. Press it damper. You know, yeah. Yeah, press it on. Hmm. I know they put dampers on without keyways in them in the modern region. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a good one. Yep. Good one. What about just putting the recoil on it or a helicoil in the nose of the cream? Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The three amigos, yeah, that's us. That's <laughs> Catman. I put my distributor in the vice and curved it over a little. Now it won't spin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful with that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can over curve them. <laughs> Optimism at 72 <coughs> Grand Prix. Car looks clean and supposedly has low miles. I haven't seen it in person yet. Uh, we'll look into your PHS to run the van. 72 Grand Prix. Ooh, it's, it's, cool car. Yeah, decent looking car. Yeah. Sure. And if it's if it's a Grand Prix, you know, it's, especially if it's got a, like a 455, and, you know, it's, yeah. like, it, it, yeah. it's a nice interior and stuff like that. And, yeah, no, it could be a nice yeah, car. Be a yeah. Of a car. Yeah. Low mileage is. Uh, on a 72 yeah. low mileage could be 200 pounds you know, yeah. at this point i mean I've, i i get it so many times people telling me how you know that their cars done 70 thousand miles or 50 thousand miles because that's what it's showing on the speedo right, right. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it blows my mind how many people don't realize that they roll over and start <laughs> over <laughs> yeah they all start over i hundred. just i just watched a video this morning from maple motors they have a, a six i don't know regular maple motors but they've got a, a 66 charger in there, which is what I put. Oh, the deflection. You would, yeah. Yeah. Did, you, did, did you see where he was pointing at the odometer? And it's got like, oh, it's only got like uh, 36,000 miles on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, on. the odometer, yeah, not on the car. The thing with any of the mileage planes is unless you've got documentation, and I've told this to a couple of people, that had really, really nice cars, mm -hmm. and they could have been original. But that doesn't matter unless you've got documentation like a trail paper trail showing you know when it was serviced at ten thousand miles yeah. in 1985 and, and received fifteen thousand yeah. miles yeah. Yeah. Think, of yeah. think of it this way think of it this way let's say you got a 10 year old car mm. and you only drive it fifteen thousand miles a year yeah yeah okay that's 150,000 miles yeah. mm -hmm. and that's only fifteen thousand miles a year i do that a month mm. you know what i'm saying but you can't really expect to sell your car for more because it's allegedly low miles if you've got nothing to back it up with. Right, um, because if you can, pay more for it, then I'm afraid it's more for you. Like a shame on you, but yeah, try to well, sell it. And, yeah. and you have to, okay, prove it. That it yeah, has and, and, the, and the, guy, the guy selling it to you is quite possibly not lying. He may be absolutely convinced that yeah, it's right. mileage. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And, and good for him, but it doesn't make it so. Um, have you ever watched that Porn Stars? Program that that pawn shop place in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. You know, they get the people that come in there and they're Chum quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're quite convinced of what they've got, and when they get told it's not, they're like they're most butthurt mm -hmm. and stomp off and like, yeah, I know, I know for a fact that this is what I say it is, and it's like, okay, you know, you believe for a fact that's what it is, <clears> but that doesn't make it so. Mm -hmm. Mexican speed. No, two hex garage. Sixty-eight T-bird was not made for what you did with yours. What um, what what's your best uh, time on that now, Jeff? How how quick have you got that old deal going? The vacuum booster went out on my sixty-eight Riviera, unfortunately. So now she's off the road for a bit. You should be able to get another one of those for a real yeah, yeah. 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 Jay Weiss, Kiwi likes porn with an mm -hmm. AW. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And a 68 rim if he just wants to just throw it away, I'll go pick it up. Well, yeah. Yeah. You guys look like you were in prison in that room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kiwi says porn uniquely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brian Power. Um, any recommendations on suggestions for fixing a rust hole in an 80s? C channel truck frame, any preferred welding rod? Not a preferred welding rod, no. Um, I'm seeing a rust hole. Yeah. Uh, it's not probably nothing really special about doing that. Um, other than you've just got to make sure you cut the hole out to the point where you're back to full thickness of metal. Um, 
and try and weld a piece in there that is, um, you know, close to the same size. Yeah. If it's seat channel, I think I would reinforce it with a piece of angle in. Yeah, it you know? depends a lot. It depends a lot where it is. You know, if it's in the vertical plane or if it's in the bottom. No, that's true. That's if true. it's in the bottom of the bottom edge of a C channel, yeah, you know, it's going to want to do that. So yeah, Tony's exactly right. Re re I'd weld it up and then put a piece of angle line on the inside of it. Yeah, so it's we'll stop hanging out six on either side of the Yeah, yeah. And, and do some overlap on it. But yeah, rod. I mean, I, you know, I can't remember the last time I used an arc welder, so I don't. You know, you know usually just a See nice big MIG. Great, Tony. There's a single overhead cam 170 slant six in the Nebraska Museum of American Speed. Don't you just take the blueprints? Um, uh, eight nine twenty five dual overhead cam yeah. and for the fourth gen Hemi. Uh, huh. Well, okay, the, the uh, that that four cam that four cam Hemi thing was a goof, right? Chrysler never actually intended to produce them. It was they they cast those pieces up just to freak out Ford. They they didn't really have any intention of of building that engine. At least that's how I understand it. I, I could be wrong, but th that's the story that I was told by people who were very intimate with that whole circle. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I, it would kind of be a natural for the fourth generation Hemi if they if they were to build a fourth generation Hemi. I don't think they're going to build a fourth generation Hemi. I, I think I think they're done. I think you could just stick fork and dodge, especially after now with this this new charger thing. It's, it's just that ain't going anywhere. Oh, I forgot. I had a I get a real good gag for. It. I was going to bring you a <coughs> battery powered leaf blower. And okay. I said, this is the turbo for the electric charger. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back to Brian. The, the hole goes through the bottom of the C channel and about halfway up the vertical. Yeah, definitely reinforce that. I would yeah. reinforce that. Yeah. Now weld it up as it as it should be, and then add a bit more plating in there. Because that's going to be just stress down. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's going to stress and it's going to want to crack. Um, it's going to want to crack next to the welds. To the welds. Mm -hmm. So if you could bridge it with some fresh metal um, and, and weld that as well, that, then that'll be a, a, a strong repair. Well, that also depends on where it is exactly. Because if, let's just say it's the C channel, but it's behind the front hanger, or let's say it's behind the hanger and the shock, and it's just the, area, the rear shackle. Mm -hmm. right. attached to I don't think that's a very stressed area it's more no there's certainly less, more and less stressed yeah. areas but it's just I mean you gotta fix it you know as well just well, fix true. it properly and, and like, okay and some like some people might say oh that's gonna be stronger than anywhere else on the chassis it's like well okay is that so bad you know like so it's stronger than anything else right. on the other okay well that but won't break well I'm just saying the the level of of attention paid to that repair really yeah. dictate is really dictated by where it is yeah like if it's in the center of the frame yeah you know what i mean like literally the center where it's taken it's taken movement from both front and back suspension and the, the weight of the vehicles pushing yeah, down all the time that's you can't put right it place. It's absolutely you yeah. know but then when you get back behind let's say the shock absorber that's way less critical mm -hmm. you know so it, it really depends on, on where the damage is mm -hmm. how much attention you need to pay to it wow We've been on for 38 minutes and we only have 103 likes. I blame you guys. I blame you guys. I would have had, if I was, I would have had well over 500 likes by now. By, by yourself. By myself, yeah. By just yourself. saying. Yeah. Just saying. Richard Stanbury, if you can't find a heater cool from an aftermarket supplier, what modern car would make a reasonable interchange, David? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, heater cores are pretty universal. I mean, like, you can do a lot with them, moving them around and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, depends a little bit on what car you've got, what it came out. I mean, you may have mentioned that already, but I didn't see it. I just saw that question. So it depends a little bit what car you, you, you're replacing it in. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a good question. I don't have a very good answer. Yeah, I need more, more background. Most older cars you can budget. It. You, can, you can find, you can go by pictures and catalogs and find ones that are close. When you get into the newer cars, like, 
you know, let's say uh, middle 1970s and newer, then they become really, really specific. They have to fit the heater box just exactly so, and close the wine kind of go just exactly so. But when you deal with an earlier car, you can fudge it in a lot of ways. Right. Um, there's a Kiwi if Marge needed a heater core. Uh, yeah, she doesn't appear to need a heater core at the moment. It's all plumbed in and we're getting no leaks. So it doesn't seem to, we're not actually got it. We don't have a heater either. It's not functioning, but I believe there's water going through it. So it's not leaking. But um, I guess as we head through summer and back into winter, um, I'll be needing to look at that. Uh, I do have an AC unit for it though. Did you get me a new marker? Yeah. I love those. Yeah. Um, so that's that's Is gonna it be probably old cool. school. No, it's a modern old school. Uh, uh, but yeah. yeah. You you could buy an AC unit for the truck too if you want to. <laughs> 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 Power turns in June that you know that is gonna be warm then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Okay, mate, I'll make the two things I want to do on Mars before power tour, and that's the AC, the AC, and, AC the and the exhaust, yeah. yeah. And then I'll charge for a ride, like if you want to you want to swap places for a couple of hours, it'll just be like... Yeah, yeah. you want to ride the air conditioner? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brian, thank you for the super chat, Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, right over the rear axle smack, but you're going to get leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it just needs to be repaired, you know, I mean, that's a fairly stressful point yeah. um, because you, that's where most of the, any load, you, if you're carrying a load, is going to go. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just cut it out, weld some in, and then weld a little bit of angle iron in there yeah, as well. Weld a little more and yeah, yeah. And tight, and tight together. So, Fubar just put up the link to Dr. Art's channel, right? Thank uh, you, Fubar. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, go over there, sub to him if you have not already. And then he also put up the link to Kiwi's channel. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then my merch. Yes, we on uh, my merch. And oh, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we have. What's on the back of your one? I don't know which one I'm wearing. This is sketchy, even by my standards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's sketchy. <laughs> that's sketchy. We've got those in the store. Kiwi, which way do the washer and dryer drums rotate in New Zealand? I have never paid any attention. <laughs> like, I mean, there's just. More exciting things in the world than which way a dryer turned mm. around. Uh, but yeah, it's probably the same direction. <laughs> that is fun. Are any of you guys going to the Southeast Gasters race in Regal, Georgia this Saturday? No. Um, no. I'd like to, but I'm not. I got other commitments. More but... pressing issues. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. A, like Big Richard. Well, 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 that, and then that's the only day in the next two weeks that. The wife's gonna be home, so probably should you know be at home for that event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They can pay dividends in the long run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Keep my stuff, that kind of thing. My <laughs> <laughs> wife definitely won't be able to keep your stuff. My main, okay, Sal Spitz. My main transport is a 450 wheel horsepower 81 AM Spirit pace car with a Gotti 750. 75 BA wheels, Porsche FI turbo. In lines. Okay. That, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's a, he, you know what? He sounds like a champion. <laughs> well, he's a he, champion. He started it bro. This is like, yeah, bro. Yes. Kiwi, is it yeah. your birthday? No, not today. No, that was, uh, that was, um, it's always Kiwi's birthday. You were birthday. talking about getting me a can for my birthday. birthday. Well, it's, yeah. an, it's a quite an early birthday present. So, yeah. 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 So don't expect nothing the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Mopar Casey. I inherited a 74 Harley with a shovel head. I'm not a bike guy. It will hit a few times, but won't take off and run. I rebuilt the car, made no difference. Ah, jeez. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it kick or electric start? Okay. If it's electric start and you're having that problem, you've probably got too much throttle blade showing. Too much throttle blade. Close down the throttle like all the way. Like take take it to, and and like those carburetors are really really sensitive. Uh, motorcycle carburetors in general are very very sensitive. So take take the idle stop screw all the way down so the blade is completely closed, and then just go like a half a turn and try it. If it's an electric start, you should go right away. If it's a kick start, I, there's a whole procedure for. Actually, I did a video on kick starting old Harleys. 
there, there's, there's, a, there's a method to it, which I suggest you, if you're not familiar with them, you're not a bike, I, I would look that up. Or you'll go over the handlebars. Yes. Air breaker leg. Yes. yes. One of the two, the shovel head. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I have sports for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Been, been there, done it, got the t shirt. Uh, uh, Rocco, sleigh hammer hitting the strip this Friday? Yes. Oh, really? Yes, we've, got, we've got the dog sitter booked. And tomorrow. Was well, that the one you told me to bring that blue thing out to? You want to go tomorrow night? On uh, the Friday night? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's, it's, let's it's closer go. for you. I, I can. Yeah. I, but we, we may just go out there, but we're not going to, the truck's up, you know, it's <clears throat> unusable at the minute, but. Yes, I was actually going to spend tomorrow getting the, the truck ready, getting the sled hammer on the trailer, driving it around a little bit. It's going to throw it with Jeep. Okay. That's going to be a, a maiden voyage for this thing. Sid Ryan and Tony, I hear the, the net is outraged about your use of starters. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was crazy. The comments on the freaking video were just off the chain. And that, that started when I took it in for the core for, for the new one. It had like some guy's name on it. So it was well used and off and yeah. on two or three vehicles. So it, it's a starter. You know, it, it meant nothing to you. Leave it alone. It, it, yeah, it was dead to me to begin with. Richard Stanbury, if putting a 2000 era heater core in Marge, would you be better off welding in part of the model firewall into Marge so the late model core will fit in? Uh, that sounds like a hard way to do it, yeah, to be honest was, with you. As um, opposed to just drilling a couple of holes for, <laughs> for the lines to fit through. Or, or manipulate the lines to yeah. match the holes. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, like a, a Mustang heater core, uh, like a, a first gen Mustang heater core, is you know about six by six with a with two tubes out of it, 90 degrees, uh, you know, that, that, that that's a, a good potential for a universal core and, and readily available. Yeah, and if you've got a map gas torch, it, you can make those tubes really do anything you want to. Right. You know, just a little patience so you don't cave them over, right? But you mm. a little bit of time, and you can make them go anywhere they need to go. Mm. Uh, and honestly, with, in Marge, I'd want to pull the heater box because the heater box is all outside the Bible. It's not underneath, um, so I'd want to pull that off and just see what the old one looked like. Um, and um, yeah, welding part of file of another car into it is is it may just sounds like quite a bit of work. But labor intensive for a heater. Car. Labor intensive, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I'm putting an under dash here AC unit in because I kind of happened to pull one. Um, you know, the, the vintage air that have the, the heat and air built into one unit, um, really, that's the ideal way to go, uh, you know, because it's hidden up under behind the dash, uh, and it's got heat, hot and cold air. Uh, but the under dash ones that hang down underneath are just cold air. So, yeah, if my heater was so dead in March that, that nothing was going to be so awkward, I would just ditch the whole thing and put a... Um, you know, behind the dash uh, unit from Vintage Air in there. Uh, Brendan Hart, uh, what's the plan for Bottle Rocket? That poor car has been so neglected. It, it'll be a year since, uh, let's see, in two weeks. That's your race baby. Yeah, it'll be a year since, since the last time that car moved. The plan right now is to find, now that the tracks are open here, is to find a test session, a private test session, and just take that car out and run 60 foot with it because that's what I need to do. I need to get the tires the suspension the, just the the, the the launch method i need to try all of these different things and find what that car really wants because all we've done so far is just take it out make a squirt or two and then go home but i haven't really had a chance to dial the car in so i don't know really how it wants to be launched i don't know what the tire pressure wants to be i don't know what preload on the suspension wants to be i know none of these things so i want to get to a private test session with that car and just run 20 or 30 60 footers and try all different things and see where it's happiest. Because that was the biggest problem with that car. I mean, you saw it. It was like, it just, it spun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then it spun the tires all the way through first. And just pissing away the ET. Now, granted, that was on a cold track. Yeah. But it was supposed to be a no prep type of thing anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a good question. Does anyone know why Ford's FEs have the unusual arrangement of the location of the intake? slash head joint where the push rod with the push rods going through the intake 
They, they wanted to be. But, uh, what was what was that about? I, I mean. have no idea. It, that has angered me my whole life. They wanted to cast a hundred and forty-five pound intake man in the pole. Yes, <laughs> you need a cherry picker to cast them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not wrong. I, you're I, working I, on a big body car, and you got to reach over and oh, yeah, yeah. lift that intake. There it's goes like, your back. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm gonna be honest. Like the first time I saw that, I was like maybe twelve or thirteen years old, and it has literally angered me my entire life. Well, what, what's even worse is when you were working with those big blocks way back when, before there was a you know parts, yeah. you know, and you mill the heads. Okay, true. And now get somebody to mill it intake the match because otherwise you'd, you'd be like this and you'd have a step here where your valve cover was and they leak out and catch on fire. And, Oh, I've been there and don't ask. But <laughs> the only thing, the only thing I find more disturbing than that is the intake port arrangement on a white block. Oh, where they're oh, two, just stacking one, one, one on top of the other. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? You, you know, mm -hmm. like like the people, the Ford engineers. I, I, I'm sure a lot of them were like regular people. Okay, but you know, some of them were the result of cousins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, yeah, the Detroit gene pool was small at that time. They're very, very small. Very small. Insistuous. Yeah, they had better ideas. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think some of the engineering back in that 50s and early 60s was, a lot of it was throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what's but the rest, But the rest of that FE motor is fantastic with the skirted veins and, and, yeah. Yeah, and you make, make all the, well, you can just smash up. But just that stupid... In but but they're what, not. What, what they're not. Okay, wait. Let's be fair about this one. Okay. okay. All right. So the Y block, oh not the Y block, the FE has a skirted block. But have you ever really looked at the skirt at the at the main saddles on those things, and especially the oil holes? Because the main saddles are spindly. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're they're about four fifths of what the Chrysler is, if if not smaller. Okay. okay. But approximately four fifths of what the Chrysler is, and the oil holes in them don't line up with the bearings. So the, the bearing, the oil feed hole in the bearing, you put that over the over the you know in the saddle, and the hole. But the way the factory does it, the hole is about a third covered because the hole is is drilled to offset in the block. Why? You just drill the bearing. But that's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> And they only did that. They only did that. And this this is something that has angered me since I was about <laughs> twenty. He's when angry. When I built my first FE, okay, okay um, 18, 18 or twenty, is is why 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 did they run the main oil passage behind the cam bearings? Why? 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 You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like these are the things keep me up at night. So did that cause a problem for a production engine? It causes a problem for anything that you want to do, except idle down the road. That's why they needed the side oil. The, the, the whole point of the side oil yeah. was because the so factory the oiling. Terrible oiling. It's, it's it's the most ludicrous, backward, stupid, retarded, cousin fucker. <laughs> Thing that's ever been perpetrated on the American public, mm. but that's why they needed the side oiler. You needed the side oiler to to Did overcome the oil oiling for the high performance motors. But you got oil, period. Yeah. But and then it, you know what always made me mad on the Ford was the was the, the Cleveland style thermostat setup. Right. Where it's oh, it's got a leak past this and open and open and oh, 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 stop it. <laughs> They all, they all do have their weird <laughs> idiosyncrasies. Do yeah. remember that FE? What did that FE start out as? A three thirty two? Was that the that was that the first iteration so, of the something FE? like that? Yeah. I don't know. The three thirty two making what? Two hundred and three fifty two or something? Yeah. Something yeah. They, they probably made a three thirty two. I'm not sure okay. they made a small one. Uh, but that was probably two and a quarter horsepower or something. Maybe. Maybe. GMO fifteen uh, fifteen. Tony, I hear the 427 Stigler cams were pretty poor on nitro, so they couldn't be that bad. Wrong. They were terrible. They were okay. So for a brief period of time, 1967, 1968, okay, 
board was like, here, take all these cameras. And they gave them to Perdome, they gave them to Connie Kalita. Now, I had a I had a conversation with Kalita about the camera, right? And his words, exactly. It was shit. There's a picture of him, there's a famous picture of him, I think it was on the cover of Cars magazine, where he's posing next to the like next to the dragster, okay? And it's like after a run. And he says, if you if you saw the other side of that picture, there was a big puddle of oil from a hole in the block. They, they would they if they had any potential at all if they had any literally any potential at all they would be out there now people would be running those things out there now they had no potential the bottom is like made out of glass now i happen to know the camera from a blown nature perspective very very intimately because while i never ran one i was supposed to run one for a guy named jim barrelaro at knoxville he passed away recently uh jim's a guy he owns uh he has a christman he has one of the christmans uh uh he has the saxon sons which is credited to be the first funny car, um, car, and he has the uh, the flip top Nicholson car. So he was building a at the time when he died, he was building a, a slingshot dragster chassis, and he was going to run the camera on nitro in that to go to nostalgia top fuel racing. So for about I'm going to say like three or four months, I studied that engine. I mean, I studied it to the nth degree, you know, every single molecule of that motor. And it's not nearly as capable as a simple, basic Chrysler 382 or even 354. So, no. I, I, I know those engines too well to ever give them any type of credit as being capable as blown nitro motors. Oh, Ari's in the house. Hey, Ari. What's going on, Ari? Yeah, yeah someone asked about 429, 460s. Are any of you gentlemen familiar with the Ford Bill? 429 and 460. Well, the 460 motor is what I've got in my Mustang. Um, it's out to 557 now, but it's mm. a, it started as a 460. Um, so I know a little bit about them. You know what they say about my uh, guru, but anyway. You know what they say about men with big engines, right? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I, I don't even have someone asking you. They have big gas bills. I have 540. Here <laughs> People have asked me why I put such a big engine in it, and my answer is because we couldn't find a bigger one. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Uh you guys have any idea why every rotary valve prototype cylinder head never makes it to production? Is there any issues they are not talking about? That's a good question. But that's not true. Okay. In, in a rotary valve in a car, yes, but in snowmobiles, the... Well, yeah, the, that's right. Yeah, the scooters had those for... Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Those the, the, yeah, the Bombardier. And they ran like tops. Yeah. Yeah, but now think about it. Okay, the rotary valve in a two stroke is being lubricated by the fuel and the oil. oil. Yeah. Right. But on a, in an automotive application or four stroke, you don't have that. Right. So how do you lubricate it? You'd have to have like, some kind of loss point, like weird system or. It, yeah. It, it, it's, all, it's all in the oil. But, but it, yeah, in a. And now. In, a, in automotive use, no. Two, two stroke engines are basically outlawed now anyway, even even in a weed eater, a weed wagon. Like because of the total loss oiling system. Oh. And and the EPA, they won't let you like two two stroke jet skis are a thing of the past. Oh, okay. It's just sea dudes, they're all four stroke now. That's why outboard motors are all four strokes now. Because hmm. of the total loss oiling system. And the EPA just wouldn't have it, you know. Right down to lawnmowers, they're all four stroke lawnmowers now. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I, yeah. I never understood it, the two-stroke lawnmower thing. It, I mean, they're loud enough. And... <laughs> well, they're just a compact, simple little end, aren't they? Like, right, yeah. So with four-stroke, you just got more moving parts. But they, they basically, the, the government, your guys' government, um, ran off the two-stroke. Mm -hmm. Burned out garage. Please put the propane in the truck. Well, the propane engine in the truck. He wants to put your propane engine in Richard. I don't mean, see why not. It runs. I mean, it hasn't been on a road. Um, although we don't need to put the whole motor in there. If you wanted to try it, and this could be a lot of fun, just take the intake. The propane hat and put take it the on. propane hat and, and, the, and the regulator and put it on there. And I have I have three. I have three full fuel well, Two in a full, one in empty. But I have enough propane that. You should be able to make that trip no problem if you want to play around with it. 
Actually, it'd be pretty cool. It'd be good R and D for me. I was like, you work on the bones. <laughs> <Let's, laughs> but you drive this thing, yeah. It's three quarters away to Bowling Green, right out of yeah. You R and D it. Yeah. Um, That's up to you, man. Yeah, yeah. We we talk about it. Um, Truck becomes the mule. Yeah, could be. Uh, I mean, I mean, you could put in a propane in the back of that thing to go to California and stuff. Jesus, that's a lot of propane. Well, it's a lot. That's it's a, it's a big ass bit of it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Uh, let, let's get it rebuilt, rebuilt and fired up okay. concept, and then we get a wild hair. We'll throw the propane on it, in because it's what it's a two-hour conversion. You know, soup to nuts. Not even. Not even. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We'll just literally, just bolt the hat down on the intake manifold, and then run a line. Yeah, and then we'll, so that's not a then, dual. That's not a dual fuel system, is it? It's a single. It's what I bought. I don't want to commit to a, to an all-out elaborate propane system until I've used it a little bit and discover whether I like it or not. Right. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it once once I'm actually starting around with it. So this is really out of curiosity or anything else. So I got that single the single carb set up with the regulator. I paid, I paid like nothing for it on marketplace, and I was like. With the few, with the three tanks, so I was like, I, this is, I got to try this. Well, what we could do, get the truck running, dialed in, swap it over to the propane on full tank, drive it 100 miles, reweigh the tank, figure out what our, you know, pound of thing for mileage on a on our barn door going down the road is, and then we can figure out if we would make the the trip to Bowling Green and back. Let's do that. Yeah, because that'll be interesting. Okay, I have a. Uh... I have so okay. I welded the tank. I, I have a couple of the tank brackets, and I welded one of them into the trunk of the Belvedere. Mm -hmm. But I have another one that's loose. And we just bolt it to the back of the truck. You know, yeah. But, yeah. And then throw the tank in there. And... So I literally have 100% of everything we need to just go. And actually, I tell you what, if you put it in the bed close to the cab, I even have enough fuel line, enough hose to make the. Yeah, because it's not. It's... Probably shorter distance from the trunk of the belt to the well, engine. Well, it is. I have, that's one of the things. I have to get enough line to go from the trunk up to the engine. But if you're putting, the, if you're going to put a propane right behind the bed, right behind the bed, then I already, I already have enough line. You'd have to run it through the cab, probably. What can go wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. A little electrical tape on the hose, keep it from chaffing, and you just go, what's yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about it. Down. You're not worried about it. You're not going to I'm drive. not driving it. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, you watch out for the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi, what do you recommend for stripping a Mopar B-body shell for full restoration? Rushford, California shell. Depends what's available to you. I mean, I like acid dipping um, because it gets inside everything. It cures oh. rust, rust that you can't see. Mm, um, yeah, but it can also cause rust. That you'll never know about I mean, yeah, unless no, it's treated exactly. If if you do acid dipping on, on a on a car like that, you better deal with somebody who, who knows no, what, they do. what they're doing. Like you don't want yeah. to Jimmy Jimmy Bob's acid dipping, right? And and that's the other thing too. It's very possible to have that thing in there for a little too long. And your rust-free car may not be rust-free when you get out because it may have not rust through, but it could have thin spots in the metal. And then you, know, you go to the acid bath, and those thin spots in the metal now become paper thin and not workable. Mm -hmm. So you got to be really careful with acid dipping. And you got to be ready for because you're taking everything out. Every, every. Oh yeah, yeah. The car's done. Every every that's you know, so it's you're just yeah. putting everything back together. Yeah. And sandblasting is obviously you know, or, or you know, media blast. Media blast. Yeah. Media blast. Mm -hmm. you know, walnut shells. There's a bunch of different media they use, um, which is you know that's all good. But if you're doing a full restoration and you want to paint inside and out, um, like if you're just stripping the outside, then I would do it, um, you know, with like strip discs and that kind of thing, um, rather than sandblasting. But if you're going in the engine bay and around all the door jams and the, inside the trunk, it's that, you know, media blasting is the way to go. Yeah, and if it's, I mean, if it's a Western California car, why is it taking like all the right. right. What, what, you know. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I'm saying. It's scuff just, and seal and reshoot and. Yeah, it depends how bad the paint is on the outside, how bad it is inside the jams and that kind of thing, and, and just you know how nth degree you you want to go with it. Um, yeah. But media blasting is is pretty good. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that dustless blasting. Um, that takes forever to get all the sand out of it because it goes in so wet. 
that it tends to stick at all the corners and crevices. Um, yeah, at least with the dry blast, you know, you can it take you a couple of hours where you can blow all that shit out of there. Yeah, but the wet, the wet one is, um, yeah, that's what, makes somebody, it that's what somebody did to my phone before I got it because I still find sand and clumps behind, yeah, in little nooks and crannies. Yeah, it just yeah. Sit, goes in there and it sets up like clay, and then eventually it, it'll fracture and start to rain out. Yeah. But you know, I've seen many a painter, you know. And just about in tears, you know, painting a car. Oh, it's been media blasted because you just, you, you know, the air, you'll blow it out with 100 psi and blow everything off. And everything's gone, it's clean. <coughs> you know, 